So I haven't had a chance to talk about the Tennessee Titans yet and a couple of the notable moves they made early on in free agency. The first and probably most notable move was dipping into the New England Patriots talent pool and pulling out Malcolm Butler. We all know the once Super Bowl hero that was Super Bowl spectator in Super Bowl 52. For reasons I still feel like are largely unexplained and unbeknownst to most all of the world. But Malcolm Butler, the former undrafted kid out of West Alabama, has cashed in to the tune of five years, $61.25 million, with a total reported guaranteed value of $30 million. Nice work if you can get it. Now for the Tennessee Titans, they're bringing in a guy like Butler, former Pro Bowler who has played at a high level, who has been able to answer the bell consistently game after game when the coaches don't bench him in the biggest game of the year. Um, and... While he wasn't the same player I felt like in 2017 and he had some issues from time to time, he is still one of the better man cover corners in the league, although at times he can get caught with the sands in the cookie jar, he can get burned. He's still a pretty good player. So when you look at the total contract here, yeah, the Titans gave him a lot of money, and $30 million guaranteed is quite a bit. The total value, which he probably would never see anyways, is $61.25 million, is an awful lot for kind of a borderline number one guy and not a true shutdown cover corner. But Malcolm Butler is a good player. And when you look at the Tennessee Titans situation, they need more good players for a team that just made the playoffs, for a team that just won a playoff game with a new head coach. They want to be able to take that next step. And the fact is, they weren't just going to be able to take that next step by finding one or two immediate contributors in the draft. They need to go out and plug a hole or here or there in a couple of places in their lineup. And Malcolm Butler does that. And you add him to an area now in the secondary where you've added guys in the past, like Logan Ryan, you gave him quite a bit of money in free agency. You drafted a Dory Jackson, 18th overall. You've got Kevin Byard, a former third-round pick from Middle Tennessee State, who's a Pro Bowl-level player in 2017. You know, the secondary for the Titans is quickly becoming a strength of that defense. And now you add into the mix Malcolm Butler. It might take some of the pressure off of Adoree Jackson, make him the number two guy. You could maybe line him up some in the slot. Maybe Logan Ryan will play more in the slot either way. You've gotten better at that position. And I don't think the overall money in this deal is probably structured as such that it's more like three years, $42 million if you actually live through all the guaranteed money. I don't think that's terrible. It's not great. I don't know that I would want to pay Malcolm Butler that much, but that is the reality of the NFL today. And Malcolm Butler, get paid, young man, get paid. And hopefully it helps you kind of get over the sting of what happened to Super Bowl 52. Um, but here's a guy, you talk about the Titans. What are some of the things you could use? You need a legit player who's played at a high level. Malcolm Butler's done that. You need a guy with big game experience. Malcolm Butler has that. You need a guy with big game experience that has won and won a lot. Malcolm Butler has done that. He has been a part of two championship teams. He has played in three Super Bowls in four years. Excuse me. He's played in two Super Bowls in four years, really. Uh, but he's been on three Super Bowl teams in four years. So he understands, coming from the Patriots model, he understands the Patriot way. He understands what it takes to win. So here is a guy that you could bring into your situation, into your defensive backs room, and he will be an asset. So this deal, I feel like, was a good move and perhaps yeah maybe they did have to overpay a little bit for him but since you're Tennessee you probably are inclined to have to overpay a little bit to get guys but I don't think this deal is that terrible the deal that I thought was worse even though it's not that huge of a deal was them dipping into the New England Patriots talent pool again and pulling away running back Deion Lewis now granted they only gave him a four-year 19.8 million dollar reported contract with reportedly about eight and a quarter million dollars guaranteed and this is a team that was in need of a change of pace back with cutting DeMarco Murray and elevating Derrick Henry to be their primary back. They needed a change of pace, third down type of guy, a guy that could catch balls out of the backfield and so forth. And that's kind of what Deion Lewis is. Although he, I felt like was used more as a between the tackles type of runner in 2017, which is kind of strange to me because I always had thought of him, especially before that major knee injury, that he was kind of that quick make you miss in the in the open field, pass-catching type of uh, multi-purpose back. But while I know based off of the structure of the guaranteed money and the reality of the NFL in these contracts, this is more like a two-year $10.3 million deal, 
This feels like to me signing and giving away money for the sake of, sake of signing and giving away money when you didn't need to. This running back class of 2018 is pretty damn good. And I feel like there are a number of guys that could come in, back up Derrick Henry, and do things similarly to Deion Lewis for probably a quarter of the price, maybe half of the price overall. I mean, Deion Lewis is not that spectacular. He's an established NFL player. Again, another guy that comes in with some championship experience and so forth. But it just feels like for the Titans, this is an example of spending money when you didn't have to. Maybe you wanted to, but you probably didn't have to. There are a lot of running backs in this draft, day two, even day three, I feel like, that could have come in and contributed right away if you get the right one and produce similarly to Deion Lewis from day one. And again, at a much more friendly cap figure to you over four truly guaranteed years as opposed to where with Deion Lewis, for all intents and purposes, it is really two years guaranteed on that roster and guaranteed $8.25 million. You'd spend a few million dollars I feel like you didn't need to. So these are the type of deals sometimes I look at it and I just say, when you look at the bigger picture of the draft, to me, that should in some ways, at least a little bit, shape your mindset in free agency. For example, if the corner market is really strong, like you have like Malcolm Butler, Tremaine Johnson, but you look and you say, the corner market's strong and the talent out there is strong, but this draft, like let's say last year's draft, was outstanding. Why would I overpay for this guy who already has a few years in the tooth? I could get this guy who might get up to that level pretty quickly, maybe not year one, but by year two, year three, and I'll pay him a whole lot less those first few years of his career. It's a valid question. Same thing with the running backs. Why would you massively overpay in the running back market last offseason when you knew that running back class was so damn good? Similarly, this year, why would teams invest so heavily in free agency at the running back position? Not because it's the running back position and it's devalued and guys have shorter shelf lives, but because, again, in 2018, this draft class for running backs is really damn good. Why would you give away free money to guys that already are who they are when you have these young guys that you could get to at least this level and they might have even more upside and do it for a cheaper price. But the Titans are just like a lot of teams, it seems like. The little six-year-old kids just got their allowance. Money burned a hole in their damn pocket. The Deion Lewis contract is not terrible because it's only for a couple of years and he will be a guy that produces. It's just, again, it doesn't feel like it's a contract he had to give out. Malcolm Butler felt more like a contract they had to give out and I felt like it was a good signing. I don't know if it was a great signing, but I understand it and I get it. And he should be an immediate help to this team that will have divisional title and deeper playoff run aspirations in 2018.